Well, I, mean, I don't know about that knife. <laughs> what that time, man? You did. Cut the route. What that time, man? You did. You guys have cut peaches and plum on this shit. Don't, don't cut the route. <laughs> Mark, you handing out checks? Yeah. <laughs> Mark's handing out checks today. Oh, yeah. I heard Gage Wang, he'll wang on here quick. <laughs> And here's your tip of the day right here. This is something that I do on my farm that's really helpful uh, when you're changing this combine around. We gotta change it from milo, soybeans, wheat, and corn. I hate to say this, but I have never calibrated my sieves. And this is something that now that I figured out how to do and you really need to do it um, pretty much after every crop because that was the problem. wire brush and some spray. You wire brush. What's what spray? Penetrate? Yes. Penetrate nanny. You need it. I got it. I don't know, you can look at the trailer and figure out if you want to put the two on the front or two on the back. I do the back. Let me take a shovel in case I gotta dig out a tire or chop up some briars to get to it. Get them ants going good. September the 19th and here's what we got on tap for today uh, if you didn't watch the last video I'm defoliating cotton right now don't know what that means that means we're getting that cotton plant ready for harvest uh, basically we're making it drop all its leaves off and then also any unopened bowls we're forcing that plant to pop those bowls open and the goal is to have no leaves on the cotton plant and every bowl on the cotton plant a good pickable bowl um, so that's what we're going to be doing today uh, the reason I hadn't started yet is because we had a really really heavy dew this morning now that dew is burned off, so we're ready to get rocking and rolling. Uh, PA and James, they went over to Atogaville. You saw them loading up block and air compressor. Um, we had a KBH water wagon over there that we needed to bring home. It's just been sitting over there for years and years and years. So uh, they had to go over there. I don't know what they had to do, air up some tires and stuff. Um, but I know they came rolling in on three tires. Then later on today, I think dad is gonna get back on harvesting soybeans. He's got probably maybe one day left up there at Lambsboro, and then he'll knock that out and he'll be moving back to the shop. And then eventually me and him with both of our combines are headed to Togville. Um, Wayne's gonna be cutting grass. Mark is off today, he's in Atlanta. So I just got my rogator filled up. We're ready to hit the field. So y'all sit back and enjoy the video and uh, let's get it started.
we just got done spraying uh, Montgomery Bottom. Now we folded up. We're uh, easing out of here. We're headed to the shop to fill up again. Uh, we got one more fill we're going to do up there at Tyler, and then we're pretty much going to hold off on doing any more cotton defoliation. Hello. Because you don't want to have a lot of cotton uh, defoliated out in front of the picker, you kind of want to keep up with what you think the picker will pick in a day. Uh, the more you expose it to weather, when it doesn't have the leaves on it, you know, rain will knock out the cotton on the ground, you'll get bowl rot and stuff like that. So you kind of want to keep the leaves on it as long as you can. Um, so you kind of go as at the pace of what you think the picker will do in a day. And I don't know if I said this, but when I spray the cotton, um, it will be ready to pick somewhere around that 12 to 14 day. As long as we have sunny days, uh, no rain and stuff, should be ready uh, about the 12th to 14th day. Uh, we'll be out here picking this cotton. So we're going to go fill up, go knock out that field at Tyler, and then we're probably going to uh, regroup and uh, get on something different. I know I have to get my combine ready. Uh, I have not changed it over from corn to soybeans, so probably we'll be doing that after uh, we knock out this field. All right guys, it's Friday and we had all kind of trouble with the white Volvo yesterday afternoon. Uh, Dad and PA went back up there and started cutting beans again. James brought the uh, white Volvo home with a load of beans to get it unloaded. Uh, the moisture was a little high, so we're gonna have to dry it. Went to lift it up, the thing would go up about halfway and stop. So we found out that we had about three things wrong under here. We had oh we had a lot of airline leaks on a couple of hoses and stuff so dad has gone to napa right now to see if he can round up all these parts when he gets back we'll uh see if we can put them all back together and get this truck back working but in the meantime we're gonna load the uh cotton picker up with a net wrap we're gonna check all the air in the tires and stuff and uh then when dad gets here we'll get on the uh the white volvo <laughs> I was here and it was going to be blue. I was excited about blue. <laughs> Pick it up. Pick it right for you. This is Mark's yeah. stuff here. He got this at the county fair. <laughs> you got it right. You didn't put it too bad. I'm going to you. That thing, baby. Not easy. Real emo game in the way. You got that good knife, right? Cut the wrap. Cut the wrap. I mean, I don't know about that knife. <laughs> One at a time, right? You did. Cut the route. One at a time, right? You get. You know, he'll cut peaches and plum on it.
All right. So we're topping it off with diesel, PA is under there somewhere, anyway he's checking all the air in the tires, there he is. So they did not have one of the airlines in Selma, Napa that we needed for the white Volvo, so dad made a pit stop by here, grabbed a snack, and now he's headed on to Montgomery. They do have it in Montgomery, so he's going to go grab it. So. Anyway, we're gonna be kind of waiting around on him to get that Volvo uh, buttoned up. So um, in the meantime, we're gonna keep doing some stuff around here. But one thing I'm gonna try to do before the video ends, um, I think it was two videos ago, I had a lot of people comment about what did I find wrong with the sieves, the pre-sieve on the uh, combine, the 8250 combine. Uh, we did find out what was wrong. So hopefully, uh, maybe toward the end of the video, I'm gonna go out there in my combine because I'm gonna try to get it ready to uh, cut beans, uh, transfer it from corn to getting it ready for beans. So when I go out there to do that, I'm gonna go over exactly what we found wrong. And it's pretty interesting because this is a very, very important step that I figured out that I need to be doing. Probably every time you transfer from crop to crop, you need to do this. So I will definitely get to that later on in the video. You don't want diesel in the face? Oh, Not first thing in the morning. I tell you, I'll take diesel on my face as opposed to that crap running out of the combine. <laughs> the, the fermented grains. Oh. God, <laughs> that is the worst. I'll put a pin on her. Where's the pin he's talking about? Oh, back here. Oh, there we go. Where are the bolts that were loose? Three oh. Allen screw bolt? Right here on the thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. That wasn't, that was loose. Yeah. When you put that gear that thing, pushing the thing back. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Had all kinds of things wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mark, you handing out checks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark handing out checks today. Oh, yeah. 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 You need me to hold it? Twist it? I think I can, I can get them started. It was missing three of them. This thing has moved a little bit. It's gotten cocked a little. Oh, maybe plug up full of muck and dirt and stuff. There's nothing in it. That one started. So dad was running around all Montgomery, but he finally got somebody to make the actual hose he needed. He's got it made, he's got it in the truck. Now he's on the way back from Montgomery. So in the meantime, we're gonna start getting ready to set up this 8250 combine, which was cutting corn. We're gonna get it set up for uh, soybeans. And here's your tip of the day right here. This is something that I do on my farm that's really helpful. Uh, when you're changing this combine around, we got to change it from milo, soybeans, wheat, and corn. So this little tip of the day makes it super easy to set up your combine. So this is your operator's manual for the combine. And what I like to do is I like to go through here and everything you have to change on the combine, I go ahead and write down what you have to change for each crop. So like the chopper speed, corn you pull out on wheat and soybeans, you push in, just stuff like that. The elevator speed, um, 
the feeder house position concaves i write you know how we like to put our concaves in on each crop and then your rotor gear and stuff like that just makes it really easy instead of having to flip through here every time page by page to figure out what you got to set it on just go ahead and write it down on the outside of your operator's manual and this is always stays in the combine even though it was in my truck but anyway it's just just easy to have a quick reference point of what you got to be on for each crop tip of the day have a little trouble getting made yeah had to have it made nobody had it and it's got to be this metal yeah it's it comes off the air compressor hot so it's got to be a steel braided hose No, you can't use zip tie. It's plastic. Oh yeah, I'm talking about pull it away from the what pull it pull it away from the airline. The plant airline? Pull the pull the plastic one away from the Yes sir. Yeah. Yeah, you can't put a plastic one on this new line I'm just did. Yes. And I need a 10 millimeter wrench. My little bitty socket set. Looking for a 10. Sure you got one? Bring me the thumb. Where's the right here? Huh? There's a ten. Tightening a clamp or putting yeah. a zip down. Clamp. Boy, you ought to see a big difference in your air building up. I had a had a big old hole in it. And that was causing the trailer not to go up. I think we were low on air pressure and of course we had a, a, a leaking air line down there on the slave, on the, uh, yeah, the, what we call the wet line kit pump. That and also the shifter valve had some bolts out of it and it was loose. So we had a combination thing. But it should go up now. We're gonna make sure it'll go all the way up right now before we leave. Crank it up and let it build up air, and then we'll try to jump it. Another day of getting about right here and it would stop and we had to get up in there and shovel all those beans out oh my gosh what a workout and getting about right here
man i'm glad we got that fixed but uh last thing we're gonna do on the video i'm gonna go ahead and show y'all what we found out on dad's 8250 combine what was wrong with the pre sieve and then we'll go ahead and wrap this video up So, this right here is the pre-sieve. This section right here. This is where all the stuff coming off the uh, rotor is riding on the shaker pan and it hits this pre-sieve first. Well, it kind of looked like mine. That's about how Dad's was when it was all the way open. These little fins, they just were, they basically looked closed. So anyway, when we went back up there Friday, we took this whole pre-sieve out. It's got two bolts holding it. I think it's one right there and it's like one over there but it's only two bolts that hold this thing in and then all you have to do is we actually hooked a strap around it and pulled it backwards and this whole this whole pan right here sieve just slides right out the back on those little rails it never hits the upper sieves it just slides right out the back so we pulled this all the way out Got it outside, put it on the ground, did a lot of investigating on it, did a lot of spraying with penetrating oil and stuff like that. And uh, we got it working pretty free. It's got a handle right there in the middle. You can manually uh, adjust it. But um, anyway, we got it freed up pretty much. Didn't see anything wrong with the sieve. Uh, what we really wanted to get to, it's got a rod that goes to the middle of that sieve and that's how it adjusts. It's got a actuator you can't see it because all this trash but it's got a electric actuator right there that works a rod that goes all the way in there to to the middle of that sieve and it's kind of like a u-shaped and so when it turns it just does like that and this sieve just sits down on that u-shape it's got a u-shape so it just fits into that little groove and that's how it works it nothing's bolted to this rod um, so that was very smart by the engineers, the case. So anyway, we worked the actuator back and forth while we had this out, and it looked like the rod, it just wasn't moving much, just barely moving. So we thought that's the whole problem, is we're not getting enough motion action from that, um, that rod. So I said it's got to be the calibration. So I looked up some videos on YouTube, found one that was a really good channel. I think it's called Axel flow combine tips maybe something like that but he had a great video on calibrating your sieves your pre-sieve your upper and your lower um so i watched that video very helpful easy to uh, understand and um i hate to say this but i have never calibrated my sieves and this is something that now that i figured out how to do and you really need to do it um, pretty much after every crop because that was the problem in the cab it was thinking 20 when it lifted up it was just in the wrong spot so it was thinking hey I'm at 20 but it wasn't it was just barely open so I finally realized that when I watched that video and here is what you're supposed to do to calibrate your sieves. very important so I'm not gonna bore you with going through what you do in the cab but basically you go up in the cab you get on your monitor in there and you go to the calibration tab and you go to calibrate the pre-sieve now it tells you to go back here and work the button on the pre-sieve but i never knew where that button was i knew you had a button here and that worked your veins back and forth and i knew you had buttons back here you got buttons under these tab this little flap right here that works your upper sieve up and down manually that works your lower sieve manually so i never knew that i had a switch right here to work your pre-sieve this is where it's located you can move it up and down so this is when i finally found this switch on dad's combine and i hit the up arrow when these things opened all the way up that's when we knew we had a calibration problem because it opened up wide open like this and the good thing is if you've got your key off you just keep holding the button and it'll eventually wake this little computer up and it'll open so you can do it with the key on or off so we'll go up see there when it finally did that we said oh gosh i said it's not calibrated right so the next step 
Now, it tells you all this inside the combine. It tells you what to do. It tells you to close the sieve, pre-sieve, all the way down closed. And then it says open sieve, pre-sieve to six millimeters. And then it tells you to hit OK on the screen. So that is where I didn't understand. You got to manually put it on six millimeters with the switches that are on the back for the upper, lower, and the pre-sieve. So what we found out that six millimeters is like 0.23 inches. So it's almost a quarter of an inch. So we found a half inch wrench measured the width right here. And that was about six millimeters or quarter of an inch. So this is what we use as a tool to uh, get our sieve on six millimeters. So what we did is you would take your wrench and you would slide it in between these fins right here. And you would close it down till it was just about touching the wrench where you could just barely move it back and forth and it was rubbing in between the fins. So once we did that, we knew it was on six millimeters, went up in the cab, we hit okay. And now that pre-sieve was calibrated. So then I went up in the cab. I said, I'm gonna try it up in the cab, go from zero to 20. Let PA and dad were down here watching it to see what it did. And when I went from zero to 20, it opened up all the way, just like it did when I manually hit this button. So that was the whole problem is the pre-sieve was not calibrated um, in the right position. He thought he was like running on 20 when I told him to open it all the way up and it was really set on like four. Um, so that was the whole problem. So you do the upper and lower sieve the same way. You gotta crawl up in here through the back to get to them, but um, you work these buttons right here, take that wrench, get them closed down, Close them down all the way, but to open them back up, we get it where that wrench will barely slide through there on six millimeters, and you go back up in the cab and hit OK on the upper and lower, just like you do on the free. So I went ahead and did uh, Dad's combine, calibrated all three of them, um, and I'm definitely gonna do it to mine. And the reason I've never calibrated them, because we get our combines inspected every year in the winter by um, h &R. So I never really thought I needed to calibrate it because I you know, just assumed that was something they do and they, I'm sure they do. But anyway, it had gotten, it had gotten out of calibration and uh, that was the whole problem. So um, anyway, I just wanted to share that because I had a lot of comments, uh, a lot of people asking what was wrong with it. So hopefully that'll help some farmers out, um, teaching them how to calibrate their sieves and uh, they'll probably all go check them as soon as they see this video. <laughs> But um, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I'm going to go ahead and finish setting up the combine for uh, soybeans. So we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. Thanks for uh, watching another one with us. If you want to do me a favor, click that thumb. It means you like the video. Um, and if you want to subscribe, Triple R Farms logo over here. Other than that, guys, we'll catch you all on the next one because we're going to have both combines in the field on the next video. So stay tuned for that. But for this one, guys, we're out. See ya.